In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to render a HTML file using the Jinja 2 in FastAPI. Let's go. All right, so pretty much where we left off in the previous video. And for this video, like I said, I'm going to be showing you guys how to deliver HTML files, uh, file as part of the FastAPI server. So for this, we need a couple of things to be installed. Uh, first thing is going to be the Jinja 2. So Jinja 2 is basically a template system where you get your HTML files and you are able to return or render it on your browser uh, or via the FastAPI. So for that i'll have to install the jinja 2 uh, using the pip and uh, pretty much i've actually installed it as part of my virtual environment so make sure you're doing that as well so once you have the jinja 2 installed if you guys want to render forms and things like that you will be using the aio files uh, but i'm not going to be showing you how to render forms as part of this video it will be coming as part of the next video so for this one let's just try to render html file uh, try to give it dynamic data and things like that once you have the uh, your uh, jinja 2 installed Installed, you will be requiring rec uh, you will be using the fast api templating to import your jinja 2 template so what exactly does the jinja 2 templates do so you will be specifying where exactly is all your html files and the fast api server or the asj layer which is behind the fast api will be able to pick those files up and render it to the user so that's going to be the whole use of the jinja 2 templates so once you have the jinja 2 uh, template uh, class uh, imported into your uh, in your, in your python file uh, let's go and start using my templates i'll just call, create a variable called templates and i'll be did, uh, telling that uh, i'll be creating an object of jinja templates and what exactly i'll be doing is that i'll be giving it a directory so i'll be telling uh, that my all my html files are going to be in a directory so i'll just say here i'll call this probably as a directory and i'll say uh, html or i'll just say probably yeah html directory right in it's up to you to uh, name it however you want to now let's go create a html directory here that's what is going to be used right so we'll be using the html directory as my uh, input point uh, to store all my html files now let's go now create a html file uh, sorry not python file it's going to be html file and i'll be saying uh, i'll call this as probably the uh, view or i'll be calling the home home pi right home html so home html is now going to be requiring a temp title i'll just say this is a home uh, home page or something like that and we will quickly now write inside the body we'll create a h1 right and uh, we'll say uh, this is the home page and uh, now this is going to be a static file there is nothing going to be changing here right we now try we now try to render this html file via our get call so in the previous video i showed you guys how to use uh, probably the pydantic to uh, create data models or uh, uh, use an orm or orm related data models and uh, we will not we'll not touch this part here we'll just keep it uh, here as it is and now go for the app.get part now app.get part is just taking a username and ret just returning some kind of a dictionary but now i'm what i'm going to try to do is just take this dictionary and render it via my html so that's going to be the whole idea of this video so now let's uh, once you have this jinja2 templates ready it's now time to now use the same username uh, and query but when you are going to try to render it we'll just say templates dot template response you'll say that template response is going to be my uh, main or uh, it was called as home home html right so we'll just say home html now this is going to be a very simple way to do it but if you see here it's asking for my uh, it asking for the context as well the context is very very important when you're trying to render a response so what the context the primary thing that the context will require or will look for is the request itself what is the request that is coming from the user i'll use that as the context to render it uh, written my html back so that's going to be the whole point of this so you'll go back to your your uh, fast api import and you'll just import the class as request and you'll come here and first you'll use the request object or create a variable for request and we'll keep uh, everything else as it is and we'll be uh, you'll be passing a context in the form of a dictionary and you'll say request as request so this is going to be the first step now if you run this now up you when you trying to use the get call or you say slash home slash username and i'll probably remove the query because i don't need the query for this one so if you say slash uh, home slash username it will probably try to render our uh, in, at this point a static html file so let's fire up our uvcon uh, i'll say uvcon um, app is going to be main sorry main app i make this mistake all the time 
all right so this is fired up i'll go here i'll show you guys how this is working like all right so we don't have anything found in the home itself so i need to now say slash home slash uh, bharatwaj and when i say that it's obviously returning my uh, html file so it's actually picking my html file from my html directory and returning to me amazing right now what if i need to have a dynamic data i i told you guys in the start that i'm going to be trying to show all the data as part of this itself right so how do you pass the data from my get request inside the html and render dynamic things inside that again it's very very simple now all you now need to do is just create a, a namespace called uh, we'll just now create h2, h2 tag and we will say uh, username is equal to for now right go back to your main pi and you have a username right here we just need to pass this username via a template response and the only uh, way that you can do it is via the context itself we are already passing a request via the context now all you need to do is just say username is always username awesome right so once you're done that uh, pretty much you, you'll be able to access the username uh, via this key inside your html so just say double and you'll say and that's pretty much how it works so you're now able to access your username and uh, use that for dynamic response and you will now be able to render it back to the user a couple of again uh, important things that you need to do is always make sure that you're using your documents right or you're giving as many documents as possible and since fast api creates its own documents we need to also enable it to probably help with help with it for creating good documents right so so you just now tell fast from fast api i'll just say from uh, responses uh, it's uh, html responses so this isn't just for the document itself you're just telling the document that we are not going to be uh, using anything we're just going to be using html uh, responses what is going to be expected as part of this app.get or this get request so that's pretty much how this is going this could be response class so this response class is going to be off the type html and don't worry about it that's what you're telling the doc document so pretty much uh, what i wanted to show you guys so you will just quickly run this to see how it exactly works and it just go up fire up our uvcon again where is the file uh yeah it's here so fire this up it says an unexpected colon or this is present right oh this is we are missing this now you don't have to worry about it go back and refresh it again and voila you got in it back so these are actually you can think of these html files as uh, probably as the uh, client side so client side you can refresh it however you want to and your uh, code here is going to be the middleware layer or it's going to be the routing layer that's going to take care of your request uh, fire up your Jinja2 template and from the Jinja2 template location it will fire up the response and send it back as part of this uh, to the browser so it's very very simple and as you can see it's extremely fast and the primary reason is because of the ASGI layer behind it and all of that is taking care of the routing the middleware and all of that sort so that's pretty much what I wanted to show you can extend this to however much you want to you can extend this to any number of uh, data you want to you can use a base model and pass it inside this base model or you can use the name values of whatever you have created in the previous video as part of the context and use that context to render dynamic data in your HTML file so that's pretty much how, we, how I would be starting to use uh, when I want to create a very full-blown framework. So that's very, very simple with FastAPI and hopefully this video did help you guys in understanding that. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be looking at uh, forms and uploading files and uh, taking care of security and authorizing your uh, request and you'll be looking into all of that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, Bharat, peace out. Have a super awesome day.